Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. A little while ago, someone had posted a comment on one of my videos. It was the video on introduction to the finance solver. And the comment came from someone uh, whose nickname happens to be, I don't care, you broke your elbow. Interesting and creative nickname. Uh, the comment also had a question. The question was, how do I calculate principal paid and balance? So. I don't care you broke your elbow. I'm going to answer your question on this video. Let's jump right into the calculator app. So that's the calculator page that I've added here. And before we go into the finance solver, we are just going to make up a question. I just wanted to show something very interesting. This is on the HDFC bank page, all right? Every bank has this kind of an online calculator uh, for the EMIs. And this is like, you know, as you can see, there are sliders to control uh, the minimum amount of this personal loan, all right? It says interest rate starts at 10.25. Hmm. And then it says the minimum value here on the slider is 10.5. Yeah, this, these are the things that we need, we need to watch out for, okay? So get personal loans, interest rate 10.25. And you might, you should be careful about all these asterisk marks, okay? You know, that might mean something else. So that's 10.25, but the slider apparently doesn't go below 10.5. Um, yeah, so, and this is 50,000 as a minimum loan. And let's just say we make it one lakh. Can we make it one lakh? So, uh, I don't want two lakhs. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's one lakh. And let's just say that we want to, uh, pay it back in three years or oh, three years. Okay. And we can change this, all right? The interest rate from 10.5 minimum is 10.5. Okay. Uh, and let's just make it 14 because some banks, I think, uh, ICAC bank had something like 14. I'm not sure. Right. Don't quote me on that. But most of them are anywhere between 11 and 14. So let me just make sure that this is 14 by typing it in. And actually, you can calculate the EMI. All right. In the context of the finance solver, this is the these are the payments. Right. We could end up paying the uh, the EMI you know, every month at the start of every month. OK, so I'm just going to hit calculate. And it says your monthly EMI will be three thousand four hundred and eighteen per month. That's the payment uh, every month. OK, uh, to be paid at the start of the month. Uh, so. Every time I try and incorporate these calculations also into the into the context of the finance solver to see how how far off we are and we are making use of the same numbers. We'll make use of the same numbers to see whether this matches up and we are at uh, 14%. Okay, let's just remember these numbers. Now let's jump to the calculator. Okay, so I don't care. You broke your elbow. Just bear with me and answer your question. Just I'm trying to give it a little context also, padding it up. Okay, so here we go. Let's just go and uh, use the finance solver first. Okay. And uh, we are going to pay it over three years. Okay, so the number of payments, n is the number of payments, is going to be 36, right? Uh, every month. Interest rate we said was 14. And uh, the present value, the loan was 1 lakh. Okay, just make sure that the number of zeros are correct. It was 100,000, I believe. Uh, let me just check that again. 000, zero, zero units, 10, 100,000, 10,000 lakh. Okay, and make sure that is positive. Uh, I've done that earlier video on, you know, the signs and what these mean. And remember to hit tab to go to the next uh, cell, right? So the payment is what we'll first calculate and try and see whether, you know, what we saw on the HDFC bank website, whether that's accurate. Future value has to be zero because we're trying to, that's the money that we'll have to pay uh, back till it's over, right? It has to be zero till we pay back. Uh, and the present value has to be positive because that's the money that's coming into our pocket. Payment per year, 12, 12 months. Uh, and this is uh, compounded over those 12 months. And we are going to be paying at the start of every month, at the beginning of every month. Now, when you want to go back, you can hit shift tab and you can find out the payment. And I'm just going to hit enter here. Whatever you want to calculate, remember that's the cell we have to hit enter. You hit enter and it says 3,378.34 or 35. 3,378.35. Negative because we are paying. Let's just check what that uh, said, all right? So this is at 14. It says 3,418. 3,400 and that's, this is lesser. And TI is saying, oh, three, sorry. That's TI is saying 3,300, whereas the bank is saying 3,418. Service charges or whatever the hidden charges are. Okay, never mind. Okay, so this is why I encourage people to go and check out these online calculators also, especially when it comes to loan, you know, I mean, small things like, you know, 10.25 being the minimum value and it is not on the, on the slide. And there'll always be some, some hidden charges here and there. There's something more that I found out recently. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but this is interesting, isn't it? The monthly EMI is 3,418 per month, but according to the finance solver, we use the same numbers and we find that it's 
five rounded off to two decimal places. Okay, because it's money. All right, having done that, now let's go back to the calculator page. And uh, what I suggest, uh, I don't, I don't care. You broke your elbow. Is first try and get that uh, amortization table, even whether it. Because sometimes the questions will be phrased in such a way that's based out of the amortization table. Because you know, in that uh, in that menu, you know, uh, under amortization, you can see the balance, the interest paid, uh, and the principal paid, right? So I would suggest you do this, okay? But if you are lost somewhere, it's always good. It's a good habit to you know just insert a notes page and um, um, get the syntax there, the syntax for that calculation. So you know where to find the syntax. You can just go to the catalog key, and you know uh, the interest paid. The syntax is here. And you can see everywhere it involves the amortization table. You can even use the earlier one. I find this helpful. You can try the other one also. It's just a long syntax. But because most of these questions are based out of the amortization table, it makes sense to make the amortization table and then use a second formula. So the balance will be this, I mean, the second uh, syntax that is because, you know, that's just involving the amortization table. Likewise for interest paid or principal paid. Since your question involved balance and uh, principal, I believe you asked, I just wanted to show you where you can find the syntax, okay? But the best thing, like I said, is copy down the syntax, okay? Just copy down the syntax. So uh, you can just hit Control C, Command C, and then you can hit Escape to come out of this. And on a notes page, you can just stick it in, all right? And let's just uh, do the same thing for all the others also. I'm just going to get the balance. That's what you asked for, right? I'm just going to use the second one, okay? Because I would have, you know, generated the amortization table also. Command C and hit Escape. I'm just going to hit this one for the balance. And then let's do the same thing quickly for the principal paid. And again, I'm using the second version of the formula. Okay, Command C, hit Escape, come here, copy down the formula, and now we're good to go. Ready? We are going to find the amortization table first. So back to that finance solver. Uh, the yeah, finance solver. It's also called the TVM functions. Okay, so you come to this particular menu, the finance menu under menu, and uh, and amortization. And here, let's generate the amortization table. Okay, remember, end payment is talking about the you know how many how many rows have to be mentioned on the table. All right, how many rows starting from the first payment, first re repayment? Actually, it shows from zero because it also shows you like when you have borrowed the money. That's a loan, right? So how many should be generated? And because you know we want to take into account all the thirty six, I would just do all the thirty six because yeah. Uh, it'll help. It'll be helpful. So that's the total number of rows that needs to be displayed. All right. This N is talking about the number of payments. Okay. So N payment talks about how many rows would you like to see starting from zero. Okay. Starting from the first. So suppose you wanted to see only the first 10, then that would be just 10. Okay. I'm going to generate the whole thing. 36. I'll show you why. All right. So that's the first number that you need to write down there. So this is 36 because, um, you know, it's a 36 installment period because over three years. Okay. And the next one is also 36, but these mean different, okay? This is like how many, the total number of payments, right? 36 payments. This could have been 10 or 15, depending upon how many you want to see on the table, right? The next one is uh, I, the interest. And if you don't remember all these things, you can just go to the Varsky because, you know, we've already done this on the finance solver. So all this is saved there, right? So I just go here and I bring out the inverse, okay? So TVM stands for time value money dot I, you know, that's the interest. And so I just put that thing, it's already stored there. What's the next one? The next one is the present value. The present value we know is the money that, uh, the loan that was given to us was one lakh, but still let's go here and fetch this, um, this um, the value that's stored there, okay? That's the present value. And what do we have? We have the payment, all right? So now that's calculated, you can just come here and get the payment. And this just makes life easier. Uh, future value has to be zero. You can enter zero, but you know, this is a good practice. Just, you know, where uh, to get that. This is the future value here. And uh, what do you have here? Payments per year, compounding uh, per year. And so let's come take that quickly. Payments per year is here, comma. And then I get my compound here. And then I think it's the start or the end, right? Yeah. Payment at, that's the beginning or the end. And we know that we are paying at the beginning. Still, we can get it from here. Uh, at, that's the one. And then we'll say two decimal places. That's the next one, okay? See that rounding value? Two decimal places, we can see that. Once you hit enter, you're going to get your amortization table. Explain what that means, all right? So these are the, the 36 entries. That first number indicates, like, it starts at zero, as I said. That's the money that was, you know, uh, loaned to us. And everything that you pay back is in negative, okay? The second column indicates the principal. 
So apparently the first installment that you're paying back after you receive the loan, you're not paying back anything from a principal, but everything that you're paying is the interest. The third row refers to the interest. Both of them will add up to the constant payment because it, the EMI, that 3,418 or 3,300, whatever the, uh, uh, the amount that was indicated here on the calculator, I think it was 3,418 in the HDFC website. Uh, that's going to be constant. You're paying that constant amount throughout those 36 monthly installments. And that comprises of two things. One is a portion of the principal, and then the other one is a portion of the interest. All right. So uh, the first uh, installment, there's nothing from the principal. Everything is from the interest. So 3,308, whatever, uh, 3,380 or something rounded off there, 83 maybe. Uh, that's the interest. And so when you add up each of these, you know, 1,000, 130 something and 2,250 something that will add up to that same payment, that same constant payment. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So the second row, second column, sorry, refers to the principal part of the payment, the EMI that you're paying. The third column refers to the interest. All right. And now if you want, you can do the addition this way, because if it says the total interest paid or the total uh, principal paid or the balance, and this is the balance, by the way, the fourth column refers to the balance. How much uh, balance is left from the loan that you have uh, borrowed uh, after having paid the first installment or after having paid the second installment. But we'll take a look at that, those formulae that, uh, those syntax for the total principal and the total balance. Okay, so here we go. Shall we do that? Uh, let's go to menu, finance, and under amortization, we have something called balance. All right, so let's say we wanted to find the balance after the 10th installment, okay? So as you can see, the syntax for balance is just end payment. Like after 10th installment, how much is left? Or after the 15th installment, how much is left, all right? And then we can refer to the amortization table. The way we do it is we say, let's say we wanted to know the balance after the 10th installment, you can say 10, comma. Now I don't need to, you know, type the whole syntax again. I can just use the top arrow key to go back to that syntax for amortization table, bring it back here, and then I hit enter. That means some 7,540 something is left, okay? It's not, I'm sorry, it's, it's not that much, but let me just see how much it is, okay? I just hit top arrow. Uh, 75,000, in fact, 75,390 is left after the 10th installment. Hmm, interesting, right? So that's the balance, okay? I hope that's clear. Let's do one more uh, of that balance. So if you go to menu, finance, and we want to find the balance, after we've paid, let's say, 20th installment. Okay, 20, comma, and then you can go and bring back that amortization table. All right, hit enter. And if you want to know, if you're confused by the E4, okay, you can, you can just hit top arrow and hit enter, bring it back, and then you can read the number clearly. Okay, so it's like 49,000, some 48.6 is left. Okay, that's the balance. Clear? Now let's take a look at the uh, principal pay, right? Is that what you asked? Similar kind of... Uh, uh, syntax, but here you have those two entries. What's the total principal paid between those two values? You can put, you know, something like, you know, between one and the 10th, between the first and the 10th installment, how much have you paid? Or you can put the whole thing. All right. So let's try both. Okay. So I'll just go to the menu and under finance, amortization, principal paid. I'll just say, okay, between the first and the 36th. Okay. One comma 36. That means the total. And let's bring back that amortization table. This is why I said it's really helpful to get the amortization table first. Hit enter, and there you go. The total principal paid is one lakh. Wow, that means, you know, what's the total amount we pay at the end of it, you know? So one lakh was borrowed. You end up paying one lakh only as a principal. There's a lot uh, to be paid with the interest. So let's find that also, okay? So, but let's, let's get done with the principal first. Let me finish with that, okay? So if I wanted to find the principal, let's say, uh, amortization, the principal paid between, let's say the 10th and the 20th installment. Okay. 10th and the 20th installment means, uh, um, you know, the 10th EMI or the 10th month and the 20th month. What's the total principal that was paid in that period during that period? Let's go back and bring back that amortization table. Um, uh, uh, there we go. I can bring that back down here and there we go. Uh, remember, it's negative because you are paying it, all right? And if you're not able to um, clearly see what that E4 is, use the top arrow key, bring the number down, and you can see that 
28,811.5 was the total principal that was paid between that those EMIs, between the 10th and the 20th EMI, okay, the 10th and the 20th um, installment period. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, in the same way, if you want to find out the interest paid, the total interest that was paid, you can go back to the finance menu and you can go to amortization, amortization uh, menu. And under that, you can bring the interest paid. And I think it's got the same uh, syntax. So if I say one and 36, I just want to see what was the total amount of interest that a person ends up paying. All right. Uh, okay, that's the amortization table. Bring it back. So the total interest is 21,620. So for one lakh that you borrow over a period of three years, you end up paying something like one lakh 21,000. Okay. That's at the rate of 14% per annum. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. I don't care. You broke your elbow. And if any one of you has any other questions, whether it's regarding the calculator or any other topic, feel free to make a comment and I will answer your question. All right. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, share and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to see you all in the next one.